Disney has become synonymous with low quality, mass production, force politics, and hatred of fans. Just about everything they produced in the last decade alone has sank in quality like a mafioso with new kicks. While there have been rare exceptions that broke into major financial success, their public reception tells a different story. For example, The Lion King broke a billion dollars at the box office, but whenever anyone brings up the film, it's almost always out of disdain. A similar treatment befell Pixar after the golden era where it seemed Pixar could never miss. Then Brave, The Good Dinosaur, Coco, and more took a dip in narrative quality. These examples and more are all competently made, but just because something looks good doesn't mean it is. Lightyear, Onward, Incredibles 2, Turning Red, and more have all been received poorly, so whenever I hear it's actually good from anyone, I take that with a 40-pound sack of salt. So after I heard from those I occasionally watch that Inside Out 2 was a good movie, I was ready to shoulder my water softener. So let's find out if that's true. Inside Inside Out 2 begins a few years later, and Riley's life is going much better after she's adjusted. She's top of her class, has new friends, and the three of them are good enough at hockey, they are invited to a training camp for a three-day weekend. In her head, joy, anger, disgust, sadness, and fear work in unison, and things are great. Until that one dreaded day all parents fear. Puberty. This introduces us to new emotions, embarrassment, boredom, envy, and anxiety. Riley's life is turned upside down as the emotions are now cranked to 13, and every insignificant thing receives an overreaction expected of a now teenage girl. Things get worse for Riley as her friends will not be going to the same high school as her. Compounding this, Riley's local ice hockey hero Val Ortiz being at the camp and in her desperation to both not be alone and impress Val, anxiety takes control of Riley and makes her do things she wouldn't otherwise in contention with her sense of self a knot of memories that have helped define Riley's character. Until anxiety yeets that to the back of Riley's mind along with Joy and her friends. Now the group has to return to Riley's sense of self before anxiety destroys her friendships and changes Riley for the worse. First things first, I found Inside Out 2 to be funnier than the first. There are more jokes for everyone. For example, early in the film, when Anxiety takes over and ejects Joy and the others, one of them says, you can't bottle us up. That's a great joke, and there are many more, including slapstick for kids that kept the whole theater giggling nearly the whole time. There are also a few jokes that bridge the age gap, like Lance, who I won't spoil, but if you know anything about modern gaming at all, Lance will have you chuckling while he's on screen. Also, the zones in Riley's head are better utilized. One of Inside Out's biggest problems was how it wasted time visiting different areas for a brief gag that didn't amount to much, like the House of Cards or Abstract Thought. And while Cloud Town will always make me laugh, it served no purpose. Inside Out 2 wastes less time, using zones relevant to Riley's circumstances like Imagination Land being used by anxiety to think up what could negatively happen. The most important carryover from the previous film is a strong lesson. Despite the problems, Inside Out 1 managed to cross the finish line with a decent third act and relatable message. Inside Out 2 thankfully continues this trend with a stronger message about how life and our experiences forge who we are being just as relatable and even more fitting to Riley's circumstances. Now, all that said, Inside Out 2 shares many of the problems with the first. As I alluded to earlier with the wasted time, Inside Out 2 does the same thing. There are numerous situations that only serve to stall the group's progress, like when Riley uses sarcasm to deflect and a massive chasm, get it, forms and the group has to walk around it. Multiple hindrances occur throughout the film, and I can't help but feel it was all meant to pad the runtime as Pixar seemed to struggle with imagining new parts or jokes of Riley's mind to explore. This is because the structure is the same. Everything from Riley's grievance to the adventure Joy and her companions go on after being sent far away from headquarters, down to the lessons both Riley and her emotions learn, all happen at nearly the same time, in the same places, and for the same reasons. And repetition isn't the issue, it's when repetition becomes monotony that the impact of what you experience lessens. And much of the setup and conflict happens because of this and convenience. Joy orders the installation of a memory getter-ritter of 
water and no other emotion knows what this is? Other refurbishments took multiple days. How did no one else know what Joy was doing? Or how the group was whisked back to headquarters in no time flat because the story is about to conclude in 10 minutes. The issue of over-explanation returns as well, dumbing down what should be a mind-blowing experience. Things like the sarcasm makes sense because Riley's reaction doesn't line up when she denies liking a band in order to appear cool. You don't make a sarcastic remark because you're bored? Riley's trying to impress the Firehawks, why would she feel bored in a state of anxiety? This is more of an issue of not giving the emotion boredom something to do in the plot. Regardless, almost everything is over-detailed from back of the mind or brainstorm to the zones the group explores like the stream of thought. The writers still treat the audience like we're unable to piece things together on screen instead of letting us plug the information in for ourselves and enjoying it more. All in all, Inside Out 2 is not as bad as my discussion of the film's issues make it seem. Inside Out 2 is better than the first, but in a marginal sense. Many of the issues are repeated and the film is padded, but it finishes with a stronger lesson that relates more to parents while still connecting with kids, and it isn't woke. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.